Welcome to First Baptist Church, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Will you join us as we celebrate the wonder of God and worship him now? be free. 
Let's pray together. Father, we love you, and we thank you so much for this day. For, Lord, we know this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Lord, as we continue to celebrate the reality of Easter, that you died for us on the cross and yet rose again triumphantly from the grave and invite all of us to eternal life in you, we pray that you would continue to teach us to be more like you as we trust you and follow you. So tonight, Lord, speak to our hearts. Transform us by the renewing of our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, tonight we continue on our journey through faith stories of the great hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And tonight we're going to talk about an event with which you are undoubtedly familiar. We're going to talk about the event of Israel crossing the Red Sea. Our theme for tonight is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. And the writer of Hebrews writes this as he's carried along by the Holy Spirit saying this, By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. Let me read that to us one more time. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. In our last episode of Wednesday Night Worship, we talked about the fact that God used Moses to lead God's people out of captivity in Egypt. They had been enslaved for four centuries, and God had sent his servant Moses to go before Pharaoh and to compel Pharaoh to let God's people go. Well, you know that Pharaoh didn't cooperate very well, and it took 10 plagues for Pharaoh to finally relent and to allow God's people to leave their captivity, to leave their enslavement, and to go out into the wilderness to worship their God. And we saw how Moses, by faith, kept the Passover that God had instituted. And by faith, the people left Egypt and they even plundered the Egyptians. The Egyptians were giving them gifts as they went out. And they went out to worship. But you remember the story that as they came out and they were encamped near the Red Sea, Pharaoh had a change of heart. And he was so angry that these people who were so instrumental in building Egypt were gone. And so Pharaoh, in his anger, instructed his army to go and to pursue them. And so they went. And God's people were there, encamped next to the Red Sea. And here comes Pharaoh's army. God had made himself known. He had made himself available to his people. He was there with them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And he protected his people. But as the Egyptian army came, the most powerful army in the world was approaching. They were truly caught between a rock and a hard place. They were caught between the Red Sea and the most powerful army in the world. What would they do? Well, frankly, the people started to complain. They looked at Moses and said, look, were there not enough graves in Egypt that you've brought us out here to die in this desert? And that would become a theme over the next 40 years as God's people would complain in the wilderness as God was leading them forth to the promised land. Nevertheless, as they complained, God nevertheless worked. This is the character of our God. Have you ever been complaining about something in your life and God was nevertheless faithful? Well, God was faithful here, just as he is always faithful. And you remember as the Egyptian army approached, God instructed Moses to raise his staff over the Red Sea. And what did God do? God did the miraculous work of parting the Red Sea such that God's people were able to pass through that obstacle as on dry ground. In other words, they didn't even get muddy feet as they walked through. God miraculously intervened and he brought deliverance to his people yet again. But notice that the writer of Hebrews says that they walked through the Red Sea as on dry land by faith. Even though they were complaining, even though they were struggling, Moses, the man of God, led them forward according to the word of God through this miraculous intervention of God. I want you to think about the amount of faith it had to take for them to step into the midst of those waters walled up on their side. I mean, think about that for a minute. Maybe you've seen the movie with Charlton Heston and you saw those great graphics from all those years ago as the walls of water were there and, and you walk in and 
I would imagine that that was uh, a fearful thing to do as you look and say, this is not natural. This shouldn't be happening. The laws of physics are being broken in this moment. And here we go. And what happens if we go in and all of a sudden the walls of water collapse? So it took faith for them to overcome the fear of stepping into even that miraculous moment. It took faith for them to continue on as they passed through the Red Sea and they could see the other side, but there it is still a long way off. And what happens if the waters don't hold? Well, by faith, they continued forward and by faith, they came out on the other side. For me, that's instructive. It's instructive that sometimes God leads us through his answer to difficult situations And even following him through his answer, miraculous even, through those difficult difficult situations requires faith. It requires faith to know that God knows what he's doing and God will see us through all the way to the end. And so they followed. I pray that you and I would be the kind of people who would follow when God intervenes and God shows us the way. Well, we know how the story goes. They got to the other side of the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army pursued them. And once God's people were out of the Red Sea and they were on the other side, what happened to the waters? They collapsed. In fact, the writer of Hebrews tells us, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. What was the difference between God's people and the Egyptians in this moment? Faith. God's people were functioning by faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Egyptians were functioning not according to faith. They were functioning at the order of the Pharaoh, um, but they were not following God. They were seeking to pursue God's people, to overtake God's people, to destroy God's people. So there's an objective difference here between those who live by faith and those who don't. I think that's instructive for us as well. God calls us in the midst of a world of people who look at the stories that we believe, the story of Easter, for example, as a grand fairy tale. This miraculous story whereby we believe that all who come to Jesus are forgiven of their sin, that their sin is separated from them as far as the east is from the west, and that at the moment their life comes to an end on this earth, they go immediately to be with their Lord and Savior in glory to experience a glory that so far outweighs any suffering they've ever had to endure. We believe that, and we build our lives upon that truth. Well, there are plenty of people who think that, well, we're, we're not quite all there because we believe that. Nevertheless, will we function by faith in Almighty God just as God's people did? Will we look to God's miraculous deliverance and continue to press on even when it's a fearful thing to do? Will we trust our God enough to follow him? And will we see his deliverance as it comes through on the other end? Would you pray with me? Father, we love you and we thank you so much for your kindness, your goodness, your faithfulness. Lord, you didn't have to deliver your people. You didn't have to call your people out of slavery in Egypt. You didn't have to deliver them as they were in between the Red Sea and the greatest army in the world. You didn't have to appear as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And you certainly didn't have to make a way through the Red Sea for them to pass through on dry ground. And you didn't have to destroy their enemies who were seeking to destroy them. And yet, in your sovereign love, you did all of those things. Lord, we confess that you didn't have to send your only begotten son for us. He didn't have to go to the cross so that our penalty of sin might be paid in full. You didn't have to have that first Easter Sunday. No, none of that had to happen. But Lord, in your sovereign love for us, you caused all those things to happen. As we are embraced by your miraculous intervention in our lives, may we walk by faith and may we know that you have overcome all and that we belong to you. And before we bring our time together to a close, once again, Lord, we join together our hearts and our minds and our voices to pray that prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. And in so doing, we'll answer the question, whose father? Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to worship with us tonight, and we would love for you to join us this Sunday at 11 a.m. as we gather to worship our risen Savior. His name is Jesus. God bless you.